Today, I'm going to show you how to make a grow bag. To your specifications, whatever size that you want, using some pretty simple tools, some scissors, a straight edge, uh, a measuring tape, of course the container that you want the bag to fit into, and a sewing machine. You could probably do these by hand if you wanted to. I would find that extremely painful, but you could if you wanted to. I know some people have actually stapled their bags closed, so that's always an option too if you don't like to sew or don't have a sewing machine, whatever your reasons. But uh, so my goal today is to make a little bag that fits into this container here. This is a normal flower box, which were, is pretty common in Finland. Uh, it's a windowsill box. You put flowers in it. And normally people put flowers in it and they hang it outside their house uh, during the summer, summer months. But I'm going to use it and put a whole bunch of these little grow bags in here and put things like lettuce, basil, other herbs, small kitchen things that I would want in my kitchen to cook with and, and to eat on a regular basis. So they are going to sit in here like so and there's going to be water in the bottom and these are going to be uh, subwatered. The water is going to come up through the bag and through the bottom but I needed a specific size bag. And so in comes the math and you figure out how to make these just the right size the first time. So the first thing you have to do is grab your measuring tape and you measure whoa, how wide you would like your bag to be. And in this case, this flower box is about 14 centimeters wide but I want a little air space in here. So in order to give it a little space between the sides, I'm going to say I want my bag to be about 13 centimeters wide. So let's draw this out on the paper so this becomes clear. Don't mind my artistic expression here. So if this is the top of our bag, we want this to be 13 centimeters wide. And now we've got to figure out, since the bag is round, we've got to figure out how wide it actually needs to be when it's laid out flat, like this. So in order to figure that out, you would take this, let's see if I find some good space here, 13 centimeters times pi. That is AKA 3.14. And you get that number in this case. So my bag should be 40 and some centimeters all the way around. So I don't need uh, this uh, number. So what I, the way I'm going to cut out my fabric the fabric is going to be laid out long like this and this is going to be the fold along the bottom and then I'm going to sew up the sides like this and then roll down the top. So this would be the whole distance around the whole bag. I need half of this distance because that's from here to here. That's that distance. And that would be actually 20 and a half centimeters from here to here. Okay, so this is my diameter when it's all round and nice. But this is the distance or the length when it's flat. So I need 20 and a half centimeters. Now we can't forget that we always need a little extra space on the sides when we sew because we need a place for the needle to run and the thread to go. So I'm going to add a centimeter on each side. So plus two centimeters and that is going to give us 22 and a half centimeters. So that's how wide my fabric needs to be uh, in order to make my bag the right size that I want. Then we have to figure out how tall we want the bag. That is another measurement where you take your tape measure again and you put it inside the container. Now, 
I could see that I want my bag to probably be about 18 centimeters tall. That's a bit above the edge of the box and it's about it's about like that. I just want it that way. I want there to be room for my roots and I think it looks kind of nice so it's open to interpretation. So if I want this is let's say the bottom of my bag is here. So now I want this to be 18 centimeters, more or less. So if I want my bag to be 18 centimeters here, then the other side must also be 18 centimeters. That in total is 36. So far so good. You still with me? Okay. So now we've got 36, but that is if the bag were to lie flat and squished. But we know that it doesn't lie flat and squished because it has this bottom on it, which uh, takes up some space. So I'm going to add about 10 centimeters to this because I want this side here from here to here to be 18. You see, so I've got to add some space to take into account the bottom. It's not exact, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to add uh, probably, let's add another 10 centimeters just for the bottom. Okay, so now we have 46 and my camera is struggling to stay in focus. So I've got 46 centimeters in total. That's including my bottom, side, and a side. Okay, so one more thing to take into account is the top. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it because I think it looks nice. I've rolled down the top. Now, that takes some fabric as well. So, I add some more, add some more length to take into account this folded lip here. So, I'm just going to round it up to a healthy 50 just because. I think it'll it'll work out really nicely. So, basically what I've come up with now, I need a little rectangular piece of fabric that is 50 centimeters tall and 22 and a half wide. This is the perfect. This gives me my seam allowances here on the sides. It takes into account the fabric I'm going to fold down to make the top of my bag and it also takes into account this area that's going to be in the bottom. Now over here you can see in my fabric and I've got lots and lots of it. I've marked this out already. You can see here I've marked it. There's my 22 and a half and in this direction it's 50. And the great thing about this fabric is you can use ballpoint pen on it and it marks just beautifully. You don't need any special chalk or any special markers. I happen to have this uh, piece of wood. It's a door trim I happen to have laying around and I use that as a straight edge. So I marked here from the edge 22 and a half and to here 22 and a half and then I just connect the dots and drew the line and the same thing here. So I'm going to cut this out and then we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back and now I've got my piece of fabric. Come on camera, work with me here. Does not want to work with me. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my fabric. This is what we cut out. This was the 22 and a half by 50. So I said what we're going to do with this is we're going to fold it in half like so. Really simple little rectangle like that. This here is the bottom. There's one side, there's the other side, and there is the top. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get in my old trusty sewing machine here. I have some nice brown thread in there. I don't use any pins when I do this. It's not any, uh, not any big deal, but I'm going to sew up the side a little back stitching here and I would show you while I was sewing but it's awfully hard to do one-handed. 
So I'm going to go ahead and sew up the sides and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got everything lined up here and I'm just using a really simple straight stitch, just a straight line stitch and I've just lined up the fabric with the left side of my foot. I'm going to let it go all the way to the end. And I'm going to do a little back stitching for strength. And that's about it. That's one side. I'll come back when my other side is finished. Okay, so now I've got both sides stitched up nice and neat. And the next thing I'm going to do is fold down the top. This is going to give the top a little strength, keep it from wobbling so much. It'll help keep the top open. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this down. Let's see, I'm going to have to turn off the camera for a second and come back. I need a third hand. Be right back. Okay, so I've got a little lip folded down so I'm ready to sew it and on my side of the machine I happen to have this piece that comes off very nicely to allow me to sew around in a circle like so. I usually like to start here on the seam because I think it's less obvious but again I'm lining it up right there on the right side of my presser foot and I'll just that down and then I just let this sewing machine do the work. Got a thread stuck here. Okay, all right, I'm gonna zip around that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got the top of my bag has been folded over and sewn. If you can see that or not. Let's see. Flatten it out. Put it here in the light. See if my camera will work with me here. There we go. So you can see here. I just got to stitch around. And it makes the top of the bag look nice. Now if I were making a bigger bag, like this guy here, it's quite a bit bigger, it would hold a lot more soil and in that case I would go back and sew alongside. So I'd sew the sides as normal and then I'd fold the fabric over and sew it again right next to it just to make it a little stronger because it's got a lot of weight in it when it's the size of a bag. So just to keep in mind. Okay so now at this point it's just a regular old little pouch here and we want to have a nice neat bottom on it. I like to have the nice neat bottoms. You could just fold it in if you wanted to. You wouldn't have to sew it. I like to sew it because I think it makes it less fiddly. So when you want to fold these and you want to make that, it's pretty easy if I can get this turned around and show you what I've done on the inside. Okay. All I've done, there's the side of the ready one, is taken the corners and folded them up. They look like an owl, didn't it? So I've just folded it up and taken the distance all the way around the circumference, <clears throat> which was what, 40, 41 and a half. So Let's see, that would be, you want to kind of make it a square. So if we've got roughly 40 centimeters, it's not a big thing. So we'd have 10, 20, 30, 40. So I want to make this edge perhaps 10 centimeters wide. I'll show you what I'm on about here. So you take the bag and you kind of flatten it out. This kind of reminds me of origami in a way. So you kind of flatten it out like this and then you take a measuring tape 
whatever measuring tape you got laying around. I've got sewing tape here. So if I know I want the bottom to be about 10 centimeters, again, not really all that exact. So you would kind of take your measuring tape and you can see about where my fourth finger here is about 10 centimeters. So I go to the edge and I mark it about there. And with the pen, I will mark here and here and just connect the dots and sew across. And then I will repeat on the other side. I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, I've got it all set up. If you can see that, there's a tiny little pen mark right there. The other pen mark is right there under my presser foot. So I'm basically ready to go and I'm just going to eyeball it. It's not, it doesn't have to be exact. Again, I'm back stitching for strength. Make sure that the other side of your bag isn't under there, otherwise you're going to have a lopsided bag. You have to go back and rip stuff out. Okay, to the edge, come back, and that's it. That side's done. How easy is that, huh? Check it out. There's one side of your bag all done. Now I just got to do the other side. I'll go ahead and do that, and we'll have the finished bag, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, well there is the finished product. You can see the little eerie flaps inside. So we just turn it right side out and you just push out the corners. And you can see it looks pretty nice. And it sits up very nicely. I guess the proof is in the pudding. We have to see if it actually fits in my container or not. There we go. Just about right. Not too bad. But you could do that any size, any width that you liked. Just a little bit of calculations in the beginning. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Bye.